What's up everybody, Spears for Build. I'm Chris and we are back painting. So last time I left you guys, I was like, oh, car's got a little bit of orange peel, whatever, I don't really care. After I let it dry a little bit, the paint, paint stretches itself back out and it started to look a little bit better. But I was still like wondering like why, why didn't this paint go on the right way? Why didn't I get a single panel to look right? Um, and then I was like looking at other cars and stuff and I was thinking, okay, I, I don't want to leave the car like this. And I don't really want that to be like what B is for build is about. Like, ah, oh, we half-assed it and we kind of got it and oh well. Because for $500, you should be able to get a better paint job. Even outside, you should be able to get a better paint job. So I watched like 10 hours of videos on YouTube and instructionals and, and talked to different people and painting specialists and tried to figure out what my problem was. And it was a really simple, stupid problem that uh, I will show you guys and I'll walk you guys through. But uh, so, long story short, we're gonna repaint this car. So what I have to do is I gotta, I've already sanded down the hood, I wet sanded down the hood, um, and I have to hit the rest of the car with 320 is what some painting uh, experts are telling me. So I got some runs that I'm gonna hit with 240 really fast and I'm gonna uh, get through those runs in the paint. I'll hit the whole car with 320, and if the weather stays the way it's supposed to and I'm able to sand the entire car in the next two to three hours, if the weather stays on forecast and we'll be able to spray today. So I'm really excited, I gotta work really fast. I'm gonna try and film as much of the stuff as I can, but if I don't hit this break in the weather, then I won't be able to film for another four or five, or sorry, spray spray uh, paint for another four or five days. So I really wanna hustle right now and get this done. So next step, um, using a, uh, an air powered DA sander with 320, wet sanding the entire car, and I'll be using probably an orbital sander with 240 to get out any runs that I don't like. So I got front bumpers, fenders, rear bumper, entire car, hood's already done. We'll mask it up and try and be spraying by about 1 or 2 p.m. Stay tuned. Alright, so in not too much time at all, we were able to take the 220 grit sandpaper and blast through the uh, runs on the other side and uh, <laughs> sand out all the spots where bugs landed on the paint. Next, I'm going to grab out my air sander, the DA um, air sander and a 320 um, with some 320 grit sandpaper and go over the rest of the paint. Been an hour it's about 12 o'clock in the afternoon we got about one hour until the premium time would be for painting uh, let me show you where we got so far we did 220 on the rough spots and then 320 came back around with 320 um, on the da and so that scuffed up the paint pretty well so the next thing i'm going to do is come over it with 500 um, and wet sand it with 500 just to get it nice and clean. And the other thing that we're gonna do is um, everywhere where I've busted through the edges on this, I need to spray primer. So first step, I'm gonna clean the hood, spray primer on there, and then I'm gonna come over the rest of the car with 500 by hand wet sanding it. Jesus. All right, guys, time for an update. Um, it's about uh, 12.45, so we're doing all right on time. The weather is just changing all the time. The last update I checked, it actually, it's gonna be warm enough until like five or six at night. So I think even if I start spraying at like three o'clock, 
I'll be okay. So, um, slowing down a little bit, not rushing so much. Let's do an update on how the car looks. So, of what sanded down the panels, they, uh, they look pretty cool. Uh, I'll wet sand it down like this. I actually really like the grungy type of look. You can see where our primer was and uh, that stuff. And so the whole car has been wet sanded down. It's nice and smooth. And then we have our panels and our other parts over here. So we got our front bumper I just got done doing, rear bumper, and our fenders. So what's next is a car wash for the car, get all this wet sanding residue off. So it's just kind of a soap and water, uh, degreaser soap if you got it, um, clean of the car. Uh, while it's drying, I, well, you gotta let it fully dry and then I'll start masking up, remasking these areas. Like you can see, these are, these are toast. So I'll uh, remask the car up to be ready to be painted, the car, the bumper, and then start mixing paint. All right, car's washed, parts are washed, uh, masked up this window. Um, next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to lay plastic under this hood. And one thing I wanted to talk about is one of the reasons why I had to repaint. This hood had to be repainted no matter what. Um, and that was one of the things that kind of like sparked my interest on figuring out why I had the orange peel and repainting the whole car. Um, when I laid the plastic down on this hood, if you're painting outside, you got to be really careful that any plastic or any debris around you doesn't uh, blow into the car. So I laid plastic down under the hood, but I didn't really fasten it to the ground or back to itself in any way. And then the wind blew the plastic up into the paint while the paint was still tacky. And then it just sank into that paint and destroyed the paint. So when I pulled the plastic out, it was like half plastic, half paint, and it was really terrible. So I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna lay plastic under it, but this time I'm going to tape the plastic to itself and secure it down real well so the plastic can't fly back up into my paint job. All right, we got the car masked up and ready to be painted. Next up, we're gonna mix our paint and grab our paint gun, uh, do a couple of test sprays and test panels, and then we'll hit the car. All right, we got our fenders set up, ready to be painted. And I got my paint mixed. This time I actually did it the right way, so what I did underneath here, you can see I mixed up the full half gallon batch of this. And real quickly, I wanted to go over my gun setup. So this is the $50 gun from Harbor Freight. So I upgraded the gun. Over here, sorry, over here is a $15 gun from Harbor Freight. Um, this one uses less air pressure, so I may try and use this one if I can't get this one to go for it. Um, I tested with this one last night and it did all right. So <clears throat> what I wanted to go over though is the things that you need on the gun is you need a air filter. So this filters out oil and other particles. So does this one, but this one's gonna work better. And then you need a regulator right before your gun and then you have your gun. So rent. To be cheap, rent an air compressor, buy a $15 gun from Harbor Freight, air filter. You can see how it's catching moisture and stuff in there. That's what this is going to do, but way better. And then you get your regulator. And let me show you guys how to set up air pressure on your gun. So what we're going to do is talk a little bit about gun setup and spray and air pressure, because that's where I went wrong. I went wrong with the air pressure. So I threw a little bit of paint in this. I got a target thing. And let's first talk about air pressure. So. got my glove stuck. All right. Um, this is the most expensive part of this whole thing is the DeVilbus air regulator. And I don't know if it's supposed to leak like that or not, but so what you can see is I had a hundred pounds starting at the gun. And when I pull the trigger, I'm dropping down to like under 10. Now that's not good at all. Um, that's because my air compressor is not powerful enough. And, uh, but let's see what kind of spray pattern it gives. If, um, if it gives an all right spray pattern, then we might decide to use it. So here's what I'm going to be testing on. 
really didn't get that much. Uh, let me wait for the air compressor. So we didn't really get a whole lot of uh, paint out of this when we did that. Um, now our compressor is fully charged up. Give it another test shot here. This is actually lo looking pretty, uh, pretty good. We got some overspray around here, but that's going on real nice and thin. And you can see that um, now I might be able to actually turn. Let me see. Try turning it down a little bit. See what happens here. So turning it down, we increased our volume and we stopped a little bit of this figure eight. We were getting a bit of a figure eight, and what that means is that the air that's coming out of these two nozzles is shooting all the paint when it comes out of the middle. It's shooting all the paint in the middle out and the and down and up um, is spraying thicker. So you got to think about it as like air, paint's coming out air is also coming out of here really really fast too much air comes out of just the center and it blows all the paint away from just the center so what we have what we want is an even amount and what we're getting there is okay and i'm able to run actually at a little bit lower pressure and since this is just i mean i still don't know anything about painting let's keep that in mind but since this is a better quality gun um supposedly uh, i'm gonna go ahead and use this gun uh, to spray today so one small change, this air regulator is just driving me crazy. So I'm gonna pull this air regulator off and use a different one. And then we'll go ahead and use this gun um, to spray the parts. If anybody was uh, curious of how I went so wrong the previous time, what I was reading was 40 PSI. People said use 40 PSI, whatever. The gun says use 40 PSI. So I put my gauge here at 40 PSI, but then when I pulled the trigger, uh, the pressure would just drop down to basically totally not enough to paint. So really you need like your gauge to be at like 90 to 100 PSI, sometimes 120 PSI, so that when you pull the trigger down you have airflow, that's the PSI that they're saying to use. Now the gun says use 40 PSI. Uh, you read anywhere on the internet and they're saying use 20 or around 20 or 25, 26 sometimes. So different people are gonna use different amount of PSI. Um, I'm just gonna use whatever I can get to work for now. But um, yeah, so do not set it at 40 at the gun so when you pull the trigger, you what they're saying is pull the trigger down so you have airflow and then get it to 40. Anyways, I'm going to spray it at about, you know, 20. All right, we got all our bumpers done. Time to start on the car. Gonna do roof first and then this side and then I'll throw on the GoPro and uh, run you through the rest of it with the GoPro on.
wanna know As I said a story goes Baby now I got the flow Cause I knew it from the start Baby when you broke my heart That I had to go my day And show you that I'd win That's a wrap on our $500 paint job round two. Time for a beer, or nine of them. Um, $500 paint job turned into about like $600 and $700 maybe, $600 after I had to buy more supplies, but it's definitely possible to do it for $500. So let me tell you really quickly how you do it for 500 bucks. Prep your car, go buy sandpaper that you need to prep your car and primer if you need to. Um, Buy a paint gun from Harbor Freight. Buy the uh, buy a fifty dollar paint gun from Harbor Freight. Buy paint from a local paint store, automotive paint store. Single stage paint should cost you hundred hundred and twenty dollars. Rent an air compressor. Buy a disposable respirator and air filters for your lines and airlines that you need. So down at the hardware store, they'll be able to tell you how to get um, clean air through your uh, <clears throat> through the air tank. What's that thing called? I'm tired, sorry, air compressor. So they'll tell you how to get clean air out of your air compressor. Either they'll, they'll give, give you with an air cleaner or you can get one from the paint store. So paint store, buy whatever lines you may need, fittings you may need, a regulator for your paint gun, the paint gun itself, and an air filter, and you should be good to go. Um, the biggest thing, I spent 150 bucks on my air compressor and it just wasn't good enough. So that was the biggest thing. If I would have rented one, I would have got a much better paint job. Basically, the higher air pressure you can have, it atomizes the paint a little bit better and it sprays it on much finer. So you use less paint and it, it has less orange peel because you're spraying it on less. So the outcome of this paint job, it's pretty good. The orange peel is a lot less bad. Um, it's still there, but I mean, every paint actually has orange peel and this has a decent amount, but it, it got a lot better. Um, it was a long, really hard day's worth of work, but it definitely made it better. And I only ended up having to spend about 50 bucks to get some new paint and 50 bucks for another gun. So in the end, I think I spent about 600 bucks. I got a lot of stuff. Um, I'm not gonna be painting the Camaro. Uh, the Camaro, I the, with the color I want and stuff, down at the paint store, they told me that was one of the hardest colors to paint. So I have decided after seeing this and going through all this, I'm not gonna be painting the Camaro, which is kind of a relief. But I do have all this painting stuff, so I can use it on any other project. Um, else what else is there next episode we'll be painting the um, wide body parts with a satin flat black um, that are going to go over this car we'll do a reassembly and assembly of the rocket bunny wide body kit which is going to be pretty cool we'll finally see that whole thing in action so check out the next episode episode uh, <laughs> god i'm really tired so this is hard uh Check us out on Facebook, facebook.com slash BS for build. If you uh, follow that page right there, then you'll get notified every time we post a new video. Uh, please remember to like and subscribe. Thank you guys so much for all the support thus far. It's been really great, really, really motivating. Um, yeah, I think, that, I think that's about it. Tomorrow, we will paint the wide body parts, and that'll be a different episode. Check it out. Please remember to like and subscribe. Thanks, guys. Peace.